Cheers. There we go and play. All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. I always think thanks for that few second or more delay. I don't even know exactly how many seconds it is from the time I click the button for Facebook to record to now. So that's uh, you know all the things we have to do. So number two, sorry, last week, busy week for Debbie and myself. So we didn't get this out last week. I was trying to do it myself because Debbie was very busy, but I got busy too. But we're back on track here. And this is second part of uh, client stra uh, retention strategies. So your clients, you care. So Deb, run away with it. Go ahead. You want me to go next slide or just next slide? Up? Yep. That's just an introduction. First thing I want to say is I've talked to a few agents over the last week or so, and they're saying that they're watching our videos. So thank you, everybody that watches our videos. I appreciate it because we don't know. We can't see if you're actually here or not. Um, or if you watch them later and stuff. So I do appreciate it. And you can reach out if you want some of the content uh, explained further, or if you want some of the handouts that I say I have, um, always willing to give them to you. And also the girls have them as well. So if you can't get hold of me, you can ask Julia or Carly because I give them the access to the handouts as well so they can give them to you. Uh, but we're talking about client retention uh, in the month of February, uh, because it's very important. Not only do you want to recruit and try and get referrals and stuff, but you want to keep those people that you've worked with before so that they will give you additional referrals. And one of those ways that you can do it is a food drop off, right? And this will work for buyers or sellers. It doesn't matter if you have, and, and this is all going to depend on you creating that relationship with your buyer or seller. So you know what they like right? Maybe That's they're nicer. vegetarians or they're vegans in their household. You can still give them pizza, right? right. <laughs> and you can just make it all vegetarian or uh, white sauces or whatever. So listening to what your people like uh, will help. And when you do this, it's going, they're going to really appreciate it because when they're in the moving, uh, packing up the house and they're moving and stuff, they don't have time to eat. You know, they don't have time to feed their kids and stuff. So you can always make it something special for them. If they have kids, make sure you have juice boxes available. You know, have waters, uh, individual waters. Make sure you're the one that brings the paper plates and the utensils and stuff because they don't have that stuff. It's all packed up and they will appreciate it. It doesn't necessarily have to be pizza. If your people aren't a pizza person, maybe they don't like red sauce. Uh, maybe they like other things. You know, maybe they're tacos. Those are even easier because then you just pick it up and put it in your mouth just things like that it shows that you care right when they're moving in or move, they're moving out of a property yeah and and uh i don't know if i'm jumping the gun at all about uh having parties uh like home uh housewarming parties go to the next one all right <laughs> There you go. I knew that. I thought I saw that on there. I was like, is that on this slide? All right, go ahead. Yeah. The so, other thing you want to do once they do move into their new home is help them get to know their neighbors, right? So uh, you can help them plan the housewarming party. This is good for you to help them plan their housewarming party because you can provide the decorations and maybe throw some tidbits about yourself in there instead of just going to a housewarming party that they have, then you might feel awkward of throwing your stuff out there, right? But if you're planning the housewarming party, uh, see if you can get to the neighbors to get their list so that you got to send them an invitation, right? So that gets their address or at least their email address. So you can go to go door knocking. Hey, we're going to have a housewarming party. They just moved in. Can I have your contact info? They would love to meet you. You know, that's getting you in the door of someone else's. So it's also helping you build for referrals and stuff. And then when you do your decorations and things like that, you know, you can have a century 21 here or there or whatever, because you're the one that's planning the party. You're doing it for them. It's it's also going to help them feel at home. Uh, if they don't want to have people coming into their home, then see if they'll do a street party uh, outside, especially when the weather's good, you know, a cookout outside. Or if you have a little bit of money because you made a big dollar uh, commission sale, you know, or uh, order a taco truck or an ice cream truck or something like that. Um, if you have 
contacts with vendors, that even makes it a lot easier to do those kind of things. But the object is to make sure you have a guest list or a sign-in sheet or something like that. Um, a guest book is always good because then the the people have the neighbor's contact information as well so that, that maybe they want to invite them over again another time, you know, things like that. Uh, so these are just ideas that I'm throwing out there to help you uh, figure out ways to help your clients and also get referrals because that's what we're kind of talking about there. Also putting on my little uh, RESPA or legal hat on stuff like this, because I had this question, I haven't had it in a long time, but uh, with client appreciation parties and how much money we could spend on a client. When you're doing a client appreciate or uh, not a, client, a housewarming party for someone, basically, you know, don't quote me on this, but I'm 99% right. There is no dollar amount. You can spend as much as you want on food, drinks, things, obviously, my opinion, don't watch the elect, uh, you know, alcoholic drinks, let them handle that, but handle everything else. Because if, if hypothetically you pay 500, say you, you made a really big commission, you want to pay a thousand dollars for an elaborate party for a, a, a client that bought a house. That's not a thousand dollars to the client. You're not handing them a thousand dollars and you're not giving them a thousand dollar dinner. This is spread over many people. And, and most of those people are not people that did business with you. Mm -hmm. So you could pay, you could give any money to anybody that didn't or give things of value to anybody that's not bought or sold a house from you recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so that's all. Just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. Cause I was like, well, if I give pay at this elaborate party, say I made a $15,000 commission, I want to pay $750 of food and, things is that too much for um, you're not giving them a gift certificate for 750 dollars you're you're having food and things it's and divided up about 30 people it's x amount of dollars you're paying per person you know that kind of thing if that makes sense yeah exactly and also uh don't forget about their relatives and their friends too exactly you want to have them over at the housewarming party and those are other people that you can possibly get in contact with right so uh, uh, the third suggestion I have is hire a cleaning crew. Um, you know, so when the buyer wants to move into their house and this, you have to coordinate with your clients though, uh, to make sure that you can get to the cleaning crew to the house before they get in, uh, or the seller, uh, to get to the house after they move out, but before the buyers get in. But this is always, I I've had several people say, can I do this? And it's like, absolutely. You can, that is a huge help to buyers and sellers. Uh, there's a lot of, cleaning companies out there that will come in and do this. We actually have um, one of our agents daughters uh, has a cleaning company that specializes in this type of thing. Um, so if you want the contact information for that, you can always ask me, I'm not going to promote on this video about that, but <laughs> I'm just letting you know, there are people out there that do that. Okay. So yeah. it, it's nice for your sellers. It's nice for your buyers if they don't have to worry about that aspect. And it's a nice gift from you as well. Exactly. Uh, a good deep clean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another alternative to uh, those other topics that we're talking about is maybe uh, you want to do like fill their pantry, <laughs> right? Because when you're moving, you, you stop going to the grocery store because you don't want to move all of that stuff. But then you get into the house and it's like, oh my God, we don't have, where are the paper towels? Oh my God, I don't know where those are. Where's the toilet paper? Do we have any water? Did we buy any water? You know, you're thinking about all those things. Maybe you want to get some bread and some lunch meat if you know that they eat meat so that you can, they can make sandwiches or snacks for the kids. Just little things like that. This is a different alternative to what we were talking about before. And again, it's judging by what your customers or your clients are, you know, what kind of relationship you have with them. Would they even appreciate something like this? Or maybe you can buy them like little matching hand towels with soaps to go into their spare bathroom because they didn't have a, a second bathroom before and now they do. So you can help them a little bit with something like that or kitchen towels. You know, people always like kitchen towels and stuff. If you remember what it looks like and you know that it was just recently remodeled and they're going to keep those color schemes, you know what the color scheme is because you've been in the house, right? So you can help them with that. Um, little personal touches like that. Uh, and those things aren't going to break your budget either. So uh, you can do that for any kind of person that exactly. any style of house or uh, transaction. 
Uh, but it's a personal touch that they're going to remember. You know, a lot of people will go, well, I bought them a real expensive bottle of wine and they really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> While they're drinking it, they do. But do you think they remember that two years right. or three years later? Probably not. Right. You, know. you, could put, you could and print out and have some uh, nice uh, promotional stickers made, put it all over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's banana it? bread it day, oh, February okay. 23rd. No, it's on Friday. But you could do this anytime, right? Because it doesn't have to actually be National Brand Banana Bread Day. Um, you can just have the thing that says I'm bananas about you and your referrals and you can make banana bread. You can make banana muffins, you know, anything like that that you want to give to your clients uh, to show that you care. Right. Yep. So and of course, have your little brand all over there so that they remember who you are. These are things for pop buys. Uh, so this is a pop buy suggestion. Right. Nice. Bananas are cheap, aren't they? Yeah, well, relative. kind of. <laughs> relatively. Depends on what time of the year it is, I suppose. A little banana tip I, I learned about a couple uh, years ago is actually the wherever, you know, the pl plants that push out bananas, they actually waste more bananas than they actually send out. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because uh, we as a consumers only like the nice ones that look straight and curved and the right color. <laughs> <laughs> More than half of them are not that good looking, but they're still good, but they don't <laughs> send them out to because people won't buy them. And they're so in the cheap category that there's no one that just goes pick some, you know, tons of them. It's just they get wasted. So, oh my God. So fact check me on that, but I thought that was pretty. Uh, no, uh, I believe that. that. We only take, you know, and I'm sure there's probably could be a place that had really crooked bananas at half price. People still get them. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. I mean, that's true that if you look at them, that's what you're looking for. Right. You're looking, is it, oh my gosh, I have a typo on there. I apologize. Uh, but, um, aesthetically pleasing. That is, that is, uh, the U S consumer's eye. We want everything to be aesthetically pleasing. Yes, so. that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Some CE coming up next week. Yeah. That is appraisal process for hash, not horses. Okay. But I suppose you could buy a porch. Porsches. Porsche, yes, porch yes, at yes. some time, but <laughs> uh, there's also another one I saw. I think it's March 27th that uh, um, Mike Ferrante is going to be doing a core ethics class in March. So if you need a core ethics class coming up, uh, I just saw a thing this morning that he's going to be doing one. I believe it's March 27th. Okay. And remind me Which too, I want to double check uh, John Dewey in, in Columbus with OFA, see if he's got any ones coming up too. Yeah. I yeah. do have um, some videos that he pre-prepared uh, that he gave me on a bunch of stuff for uh, the Ohio Housing Finance Authority. So if he doesn't do a class, but you want access to the videos that he's done previously before, just let me know, because I do have those saved, those videos too, and I do give them out. Uh, there's a lot of good information. There's also um, uh, the Cuyahoga County is doing a... Um, program to help first time home buyers as well right now. And they're giving up to $25,000 with help with closing costs and such. So you want to check that out too, if you haven't, um, Great. I think it's Cleveland home or something like that, but you guys always got to be watching that stuff because that's how you're going to show your value is providing all this information to your clients to help them out. Exactly. And I think these, uh, uh, take and see this way. You learn a lot more than just clicking through. No one really retains a lot of those click throughs like on Hondros and things. A lot of agents take those could click through a class at any time, but you really don't learn anything. <laughs> no, it's a lot of reading and people are speed reading through it just to get and, it done. And this you know? again, if you haven't taken one, basically you got to log online. You got to be there the whole time. There's going to be questions throughout to to make sure that you are paying attention, or at least you know somewhat paying attention. That uh, to survey questions, and they're going to ask you different survey questions of 
you know, license number and things like that. So you have to be ready on that. And uh, I haven't talked to any, 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 Hesh or Mike, if any, they've caught anybody cheating, <laughs> like having someone else log in for them. But but just in <laughs> case, if you have any thoughts of doing something bad like that, they have questions throughout their Zooms that only you would have the, the knowledge of answering, uh, not just some random person. So I haven't heard any of that, but just figured yeah, save you do. someone the time if they think <laughs> That's... you do have to answer the questions too i just did a class with hush uh, a couple weeks ago yeah, uh, don't tell the... what the questions are no no <laughs> it, it's whatever he decides to do uh, right. it's what it and good. both of them they, it's whatever they decide so there's no prearranged questions he'll be like oh this is a good one let's do this and then uh his assistant will pop it up on the screen and then you have to answer it. And she's the one that's watching to make sure that everybody's answering the question. So it's not him. It's like, well, hey, they're too busy. They're doing their thing. Yeah. They're not really paying attention. It's not them. They have helpers. And I know, so. I know Mike's is getting into, you know, five, six, 700 people coming to his. I know Hesh is probably in the thousands. Yeah. Hesh has people his. all over the United States and he just, right. he has, not only real estate agents, he has attorneys on there. He He's big time. He, he has a, a lot of people. Yeah. And he's supposed to be going to be doing, he thinks in May, um, I don't have the info for it yet, uh, a, a class on, it's either going to be May or June, uh, about how to help structure your buyers if they have to pay commission to the buyer's agent. So stay ah, tuned good. for that. He's working on something so that he can help us all because he's all in an uproar about everything as well. And he's not even a real estate agent, but he's just trying to help everybody out. So you got it. Well, good. Well, thanks for all that, Deb. Uh, and thanks for joining us or watching this. <laughs> Again, some agents ask, like, why isn't this, you know, why can't I log in? We just want to get the information out. And you could always reach out to Debbie or myself and we'll go one on one on you with all, any information that we go over in these videos. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Yeah, they'd be way too long if we had people yeah. asking questions. So <laughs> thanks, exactly. everybody. We, we we'll like one-on-ones. Yeah. Like yeah. All right. <laughs> have a good one. Bye-bye.